Welcome back to the 59th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one we're going to add another button to the home page and we're going to carry on with our sort of friends list and we're just going to add what I think would be a very useful button so that the user can actually interact with their friends list and be able to add or remove users. So we've got most of the functionality in place for them to be able to actually do that. We have the URL which goes to our view uh, which goes and uses our logic we've defined in our model and now we sort of need to just bring that all together and allow a user to click on a button uh, and add or remove a friend respectively. So let's go ahead and edit the home template which is where our list of all our users and also just our friends are uh, brought to the user. In our home template then which powers this page uh, I want to just go to templates home home.html and this is where we've got the list of users and also the list of friends being pulled through into our template. Now what I want to do is add a button next to each of these uh, instances to be able to uh, for the friends list I just want a remove user or remove friend and then for the other people here I want to add friend. So let's go and do that, although in fact for the other people we, we only want to add the friend or have an add friend button if they're not in the friends list. So there's a lot of template logic here which I, I sort of want to show you what would be my approach to incorporating something like this into a template. If you've been following along you know that I use bootstrap in this project so I'm going to use what's called a bootstrap button. So if we just go and say bootstrap buttons and we should be able to find uh, bootstrap.com forward slash CSS, that's sort of the link that we need, you can just go to that directly if you want. And what I want to do is I want to click on buttons which is here on the right hand side. Now this is going to be the stuff that we want to use. Now these buttons here, you can see they, they're fine, they're good examples of buttons, but they are a little bit plain. And what I want to do is I want to scroll down and you can see now that we've got some nice colourful buttons that Bootstrap styles for us by default. So the two that I'm going to be focusing on are the green one for add a friend and we could use the red one, that would be sort of remove a friend, but that sort of signals that it's a really bad thing to remove a friend, but if they want to remove the, the, that user as a friend then they should be able to not sort of feel bad about it. So I think I'm just going to use the default one. You can of course choose whatever colours you want. Uh, you could, you know, just mix and match any if you wanted to, but that's the one that I'm going to be going with because I think that's probably going to look the best. And now, of course, you can always write your own CSS and customise this completely however you want, but I'm just going to sort of stay away from that for now because this isn't a CSS tutorial. This is just trying to focus mostly on the Django Web Framework itself and throw in a bit of Bootstrap just to sort of give us that functionality that we need. So with that said, I want to grab on these buttons. Let's just grab the default button and I'm going to add it to the uh, so the friends. So let's go and paste it in there and we should be able to change this to add, oh sorry, this would be a remove friend button. So I'll just change the text for now and then we should be able to see uh, if we go back to our our local server here, where you can see my server's running, and if we refresh, now we've got a button. Now what I want to do is I want to allow that button to be clicked. So at the moment we've got the button, but if we click it, it doesn't do anything. It, uh, it doesn't even send a request to our web server yet. So I think the easiest way for us to be able to do that is simply wrap it in a link, which would be like an A tag in HTML. So I'm going to say A, and Atom gives me this sort of uh, text that this sort of snippet that I can use, uh, but you can just type this out manually of course. And the link, we're going to come back to the link in a minute because it is going to use that URL that we've defined and uh, for that reason it's going to be quite a complicated sort of link. So I'm going to leave that out for now and I'm just going to uh, move this A tag to after the button so the button is included within the link and see if that works. I'm just going to do, uh, let's say Google for now, just to double check that what we're doing so far is going to work. So http www.google.com That should do for our testing purposes. And if we say remove friend, so it goes to Google. That's exactly what we want. So we know that the button's working now. It's just a matter of finding the right link for us to be able to set this to in order to be able to uh, 
remove a friend. So in this case, I want to make it a dynamic link. So I'm going to use the Jinja uh, templating, or in fact, I'm using the Django templating language, which is the standard one that comes when you do Django admin start project to initialize your sort of project template. And now what I want to do here is just do a URL, just like we've done before up here with the accounts and the view profile stuff. And we want to utilize that, that URL that was defined uh, previously when we were talking about the uh, friends list and creating that many-to-many -many relationship using the URL. So if I go to the uh, home urls.py we can see the URL has the name change friends so that's what I called it to correspond with the view and what I want to do is use the namespace home so if you're not sure about the namespace go to your main URL configuration so it's the name of your project in my case tutorial urls.py and you can see the namespaces we have defined and for home it's going to be the namespace home so that's where that comes from and if we do colon we can now do the name of that URL so looking in our URLs again we have change friends here so that's going to be uh, home colon change friends so change underscore friends and now that would be good so that would make a request to that URL but because this URL has a few complicated regular expressions in it, it means that we need to provide operation and primary key, otherwise Django will sort of be like, uh, I don't really get that, why are you not providing me information which I sort of expected in the URL? Uh, otherwise it would just be forward slash forward slash forward slash and it would try to submit empty data to our view and our view sort of assumes that it's either going to be add or remove and also a valid integer primary key uh, to be able to find the appropriate friend object. So of course if we just submitted nothing there that wouldn't work. So in order to submit something just like we've done here I want to do uh, operation so that's the first variable name in the URL and that's going to be equal in this case to remove. So then I can do pk is equal to friend dot pk. So that should give us the correct URL we can double check that in a minute um, that should be all we need to do for the moment, so let's have a look at that. And if we hover over the button, you can see in the bottom bottom left, so down here in Chrome, you can see the link, so it's home forward slash connect forward slash remove forward slash three. And if we click it, so you can see that uh, user is now removed. So that's really, really nice because it allows our users to be able to delete all their friends. You can try it again here, but now you can see, as a user would see, uh, sort of when they hadn't added any friends in the first place, uh, they have no friends. They're allowed to remove them, but because they have no friends, uh, that's kind of useless until they can actually add them back again. So let's sort of use a similar bit of logic to be able to say, uh, add a friend for these users. Now I want to do, I want to just copy this, I think, and I'm going to paste it just under here. So we should have the link and it's going to go to the same URL but in, instead of remove it's going to be add so that it'll add a friend. Also instead of remove friend it'll be add friend and I'm also going to change it from default to in the documentation we can have a look uh, the green button is going to be success so button button dash success is going to be the bootstrap classes that I'm going to use to style uh, the success button or a green button in other words so let's say success and now we can have a look at that and I've probably done something wrong here so let's have a look friend.pk so we've got to change that to the variable a user which is defined inside this for loop because remember it's a different for loop so for friend and friends versus for user and users in this case we want to do the user so that's, that's, by the way, an error that you would get if you did something wrong with the URL and it said, okay, these aren't the right parameters, you, you sort of need to fix it because uh, at the moment you're just passing in primary key is empty. So that's not going to work. Uh, so let's refresh this. And now you can see we have the add friends button. If we add a friend, you can see it now shows up as test and this is really good, this is allowing us to populate and unpopulate any particular user from our friends list. 
So essentially all our functionality is there, but I want to also fix one small issue, uh, which is that if test has been added as a friend, we don't really want them to be able to add the friend button there. So let's have a think in the template, and I think if, we, we need to write an if statement here, so somewhere in this I'm going to say if if this user is in our friends list, don't show this button. So let's see how we might be able to do that. Uh, so let's write an if statement here, and so this is going to encompass the the button itself, so the link as well, and that is the bit that I want to show or hide based on this if statement. So I'm going to say if something, I'll come back to that in a second, and I always like to close off the if statements as soon as I can because otherwise I always forget uh, because I'm used to writing Python where you don't actually have to. Uh, if you're used to C Sharp or some uh, some other language which doesn't use white space then you'll probably be more used to putting the end bracket on an if statement and it won't be such an issue but in this case I do want to close the if statement and I want to say if user in friends let's see if this is going to work uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work, so let's have a look. And okay, so now we've got a button, but it's showing up sort of opposite to what we want. So if the user is in our friends list, it's showing the button. But we want sort of the other way round. We want if the user is in our friends list, then we don't want to show the button. Or if the user is not in the friends list, in other words. So let's say if not user in friends that should now give us the buttons only on the people that we haven't connected with yet. So if we want to connect with test3 account, add friend, boom, we can now see them as a friend, we can now remove them, and populate our friends list however we want. As a user, this is very powerful because it actually allows us to, on a very basic level, interact with other users in the system without having to use the Django admin or the shell or anything like that the actual user of the website without admin privileges is able to now do that themselves. Now I do want to highlight a particular sort of area that you might want to think about with this. Essentially we're making two get requests every time a user presses a button. So we're doing the initial one to send the uh, add and the seven to our view which handles the making or removing of a particular connection between two users that's using our many-to-many -many relationship. And then we're making another get request because of the redirect in that view. So if we look at the views, you can see we have a redirect here. That means we're making another request on every single click of that button to the home page to reload the home page. So every time we remove a friend, that's why it looks like it sort of live updates when in actual fact it's simply refreshing the page. Now, if other stuff may have changed in the home page, you'd also see that because it's uh, doing a full refresh. That can be perhaps quite expensive. It's not necessarily the most efficient way of doing something like this, but it does essentially work as we want it to. And it's just sort of something to consider if you're thinking about scaling these applications to a very large extent where, you know, any sort of small performance improvement may make a huge difference to, you know, the revenue of your business, for example. I just thought I'd leave you with that thing to think about. But in the next video, we're going to focus on something slightly different. And because we've finished this friends list effectively, it does effectively function and serve its purpose as a friends list where we can add and remove users. I'm now going to think about how we can structure our Django settings more effectively.